<laughs> Welcome. This is Chip Roasting. I'm Wally. I am somebody. I'm Brennan. I'm not Brennan. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. We're roasting some chips. <laughs> Happy New Year, Chip Roasters. Yes, Happy New Year. I, happy I New Year. I could have stopped saying that about a week ago, but it's nah. so. Yep. Uh, hey, hey, Wally. I haven't done a podcast with you since last year. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's been a couple months. Things have been busy. The holiday season makes things a little difficult to record. Um. You know, with travel and that kind of stuff. So here we are mm-hmm. in the new year, 2024. Excited about what this year has to bring in Absolutely. terms of Star Wars and Marvel and DC yeah. and, yeah. you know, the weather maybe. I don't know. Yeah. The apocalypse. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hopefully not the last one, but if it happens, we're prepared. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not prepared, but, you know, mentally I'm prepared. Physically, not really. Mm-hmm. Um, I gotcha. <laughs> um. <laughs> Go ahead. Starting things off with some news here, I yes, think. it's been a lot. I, I believe. I'm just going to go through what you sent me. What you sent me. Yeah, that's also the uh, news since last episode. <laughs> I've, I've lost my headphones, <laughs> a, 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 apparently. So we're just going We're going off the cuff here. Fantastic. Well, that's okay. You don't, you don't, as always. You weren't using it for the mic because your mic's right in front of you, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah the one constant <laughs> in this mm-hmm. show is that the on is the on air mic mm-hmm. it we have to show we're on the air somehow exactly um, um i believe this is the last piece of news we haven't covered which was the uh like it, well, it, well we know what it is now but it says jeff loveness was reportedly told that marvel studios was likely moving away from kang which is why he was removed from the Avengers to Kang Dynasty. They aren't likely moving away from him. They just straight up fired Jonathan Majors because he kind of yep. sucks. He is gone. I found where that is. I had to scroll really far back. So. <laughs> yes. Good be in a while. Okay. Lots of lots of news. Mm-hmm. The news heavy podcast. Um, the ones that you guys love. You guys love when we just talk about news, and that's just it. We just recap <laughs> things you've probably already seen on your feed. Unless- Months ago. <laughs> Unless you're Matt, of of course, or one actual listener who probably doesn't see any of this. Nope. So, you know what, Matt? We do this for you, and you're exactly. welcome. Yep. We're giving you our takes two months late. But Jonathan mm-hmm. Majors and Kang, pretty much done with Marvel. Are done at Marvel. Yes. So at least for the time being. Um, From what we've seen, I think it kind of works because with how Loki Season 2 ended, they can treat that... As a send off for Kang, uh, mm-hmm. the 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 variant, and I think it's fine. I think it works, uh, just fine as an ending to the Kang arc. Yeah, and from a people standpoint, it he sucks. So, mm-hmm. good, yep. good. For, um, yes, I've also seen. I don't know if this is in the news thing. We'll probably cover it. Somewhere. It, it 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 probably is, but we'll just talk about it now it's also rumored i don't believe it's confirmed yet but it is rumored that they are ch- changing the title of the uh avengers king dynasty movie to secret wars part two so they're gonna have a secret wars part one and a secret wars part two instead of secret wars and the king dynasty which i think i like more yeah because it gives them a little bit more room to kind of flesh out a story Kind of like yeah. they did with uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah, I also think I would much prefer that. Yeah. So, and I know, I think in the comics, Kang has something to do with Secret Wars. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. So like, it, it would have led I into one and another, but I I like the way that they're going to do it this this way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if only they could just keep the consistency up with their shows. They are talking about recasting. Kang still I kind of get why that. like he's a he's a big character yep. but after they work so hard to be like yeah every multiverse variant of Kang looks like this one actor we've now had to fire if 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 I were them which I'm not I would just steer away from that completely put Kang to rest here yeah yeah 
Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It's interesting, and maybe they can do something with it in this next movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Madam, we got a Madam Web trailer, which I don't remember because yes. that was months ago. Um, it uh, I think I remember it's looking good. What's the line? Uh, the line. Um. Uh. He was uh researching spiders in the Amazon with my mom right before she died. That's such an iconic line that I've seen quoted to death and memed to death on Twitter, and I love it so much. It's so out of place. It's so clunky. The, the all of the editing of the trailer, the costumes we've seen, everything looks, looks like it's from the early two thousands at 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 best. I don't know it like like the writers talked about this. It's the writers for Orbius. Uh-huh. Um, oh God! And so much of this movie looks like it's it 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 looks like it's going to be a movie straight from the two thousands, and I love it. And I'm going to see it eight times. It looks so bad, but in the best way possible. I think that's been my biggest critique with Sony, and if I especially saw it with Venom and Venom Two. They have not moved away from the early two thousands, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and like like superhero movies become like or at least you know for a while they were they were deep they had like really good themes they had good stories, and then Sony's just like ha 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 superhero. Yes. I was like yeah that's fine yes. I mean like and, and obviously they've had a couple that were really good the, mainly the new Spider Man movies, and then the Andrew Garfield ones but even the Andrew Garfield ones felt like they're from the early two thousands a little bit. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's like a little bit better this, CGI, but this one has such a specific vibe to it. I don't even know how to describe it, and it like like it does not look like it'll be winning any awards with critics, anything of of that nature here. So much of the the marketing around it seems so so sloppy, but right. it just looks like it's gonna be a train wreck for me. But it's gonna be a train wreck that I'm going to love. And I like this movie opens up in theaters on. V- Valentine's Day. Is that soon? Yep, it's opening on Valentine's Day. And I'm 100% dragging a little more into it <laughs> for a Valentine's Day opening night uh, movie watch. And I, I I hope it is it is every bit as, as entertaining as it looks like it is going to be. It's weird. It drops on a Wednesday. Uh, like, in a way that the creators did not intend at, at all. <laughs> that is what I'm hoping for. Well, I guess it opens up in exactly in less than a month. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, I think I may also go to that, but I'll probably go by myself just uh, based <laughs> yeah. on history. But uh, man, that, yeah, you're right. It's going to be a train wreck, but mm-hmm. a very watchable train wreck. And I think those are my favorite kinds of train wrecks. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Speaking of multiverse, we got a trailer for season two. Yep, trailer for season two of What If, <laughs> um, which now has a little fully late. released, and we can fully talk about it, or, or when we get there later, I can fully to talk about. It. Wally, I don't think you've seen a single episode from season two at, at all. No, I forgot it existed. To be honest, nice, nice. Um, nice. That was that was in the middle of uh, craziness at work, so I just didn't watch anything really. Nice. Um, and apparently, Brennan called it. Like, I mean, he knew exactly when that was coming. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll talk it's more about good. that a little bit later. But, um, yeah, what if is out, in case anyone mm-hmm. cares, in December of 2023. So, yep. yeah, absolutely. Um, next piece of news was interesting. Very interesting. Pedro Pascal has officially been cast as Reed Richards in Fantastic Four. No. Brennan, what was your initial reaction to this? Um, my initial uh, reaction was, oh no, not Pedro. I love Pedro Pascal so much. He's he's fantastic. Fantastic Four seems like a that's penance almost here with with like just it was announced so long ago and nothing happened. It's just kind of been this was the first piece of news we've gotten for it. Purgatory since, yeah. And like I think if it's a good movie, and I'm praying it's a good movie, I think he'll do a fantastic job. He'll knock it out of the park here, but I'm just so terrified this is gonna be a bad movie and not like a 
fun bad movie like i'm hoping adam webb will be it'll sort be like, like fan fantastic bad yeah it, it, it'll be an like an actual bad movie one that i will never want to watch ever we again here it can't be worse than fan fantastic it really can't but it might yeah that was such a bad movie fan fantastic is one of the worst movies i've ever watched it it was on and in my hotel the other day like i was yeah. through the channels and i was like no <laughs> <laughs> I can, it's just that like it's not even rewatchable. It's just yeah. so bad. I actually, it's unfortunate because Michael, uh, what's his name, Michael B. Jordan was so good in it. Like he's see, the only bright spot in that movie. I don't remember a lot from that Im- movie at at all. There's like what, like three or four, uh, like other Fantastic Four movies here, and I get them all can conf- I get them all confused for some reason. Well, I think the original ones, the one with Chris Evans, is uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Johnny Storm. Yeah, those are good because we th- we were kids when it came out and we thought it was good then. I don't think they're actually good movies. Yeah, if I remember correctly, but I would be shocked if any of the Fantastic Four movies hold up at all. But I do remember watching the first Fantastic Four movies when I was young and being like, "This is cool." Yeah, not like good. I, I don't think even <laughs> as a kid I thought they were good, but I thought they were cool. Yeah, yeah, I think that's how we all kind of felt with that. Um, and then there was that Fantastic Four movies in the '90s that was made, but never released because it was so bad. Yeah, or so really bad like track that, record for Fantastic Four movies. So you're right yeah. in, in 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 not having any hope for this. Uh, but yeah, uh, Pedro Pascal is officially starring here, and I think a piece of news we'll get to later. But I'll just say it here because why not? But he actually dropped out of filming another movie in order to clear up room in his schedule to oh yeah, I saw that, Fantastic yeah. Four. So he is really committed, committed to this to year, and I hope it's a good choice. I really hope it's a good choice. I do too. Who else is in this movie? <laughs> I think they cast the woman Fantastic Four member. Uh, Invisible Woman? I can't remember. Huh? Invisible Woman? Yeah, is yeah, she's Food Storm, yes. right? Like, yep. without a name, yeah. I think they cast her, I don't remember, which is bad. That is bad because that means it wasn't memorable. Yeah, let's see. Casting rumors, let's see. Um, I don't, it doesn't look like anyone has right. officially been cast for it. Okay, so maybe it is still just him for it now, which would mean that in the, like, what, three years since that movie was announced, we've gotten a single casting. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's been even longer than that. It's 2024. I think they announced it in, like, 2019. Oh, wow. Rumored Sue Storm. Well... Kirby? Oh no, that's a that's according to fan artwork. Yeah, there's yeah. so there's no, yeah, no no more casting news other than we'll just, get there, maybe. Look, if they do the Fantastic Four, I hope it's the version where they have the children, because those children are terrifying. Inter- interesting. Yeah. Okay. Next piece of news: Star Wars. Next piece. Star Wars. Documentary about the Star Wars holiday special was supposed to be released on December 5th. Did that ever happen? No idea. Because you'd think it would have been on Disney Plus, right? Let me, you know what? That's a good point. I would think that, but Disney has tried to bury the Star Wars holiday special, so maybe not. Well, okay, but so is like Lucas Films did before then. Yeah. Um,. Oh, it was it was just released on digital and Blu-ray. It doesn't say Oh yeah. yeah. Adam F. Goldberg served as uh the executive uh producer. Oh, wow. hmm. That's the character from uh the Goldbergs. Yeah, uh, that's ba- that's, that's based on that guy's life. He yeah, wrote the that show, yeah. It. That's wild. It's funny. Shout out to him. 
Okay. Well, I cool. wish there was a way I could watch it without having to buy it on Blu-ray or DVD because I don't have a Blu-ray. Oh, no, I do have a Blu-ray player now. I have a PS4. Yeah, it, uh, it looks like it's out on digital somewhere, but not Disney Plus from how it was uh, d- described. So It's weird. You'd think because the guy from the Goldbergs, he like Goldbergs was on ABC. You'd think it'd be with Disney. Yeah, but mm, well, anyway. maybe they're keeping up Lucasfilm's streak of trying to bury the uh, Star Wars Holiday Special, even though Disney has monetized a lot of life game, like, merch stuff here, so. Oh, yeah, there's that, and then they have the, the cartoon yes. from the, the Boba Fett cartoon. Yeah. Yep, Disney yep. Plus. So, like, they're not erasing it completely, just the parts that suck. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess would be most of it, so. Yeah, it would be everything except for the Boba Fett cartoon. <laughs> and the concept of life day. <laughs> yes. Uh, that movie was so bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We, yeah. Anyway, if you guys are interested in what, what we actually think in real time, go back to episodes four, five, six, and seven, or maybe yeah. it's five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, it's it's and like you can watch us on. watch course, the entire movie. In yeah, four epi- first, took us four episodes to get through it. Yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. I should go back and watch that. I totally forgot I, that we even did that. I blocked that from my memory. <laughs> Yeah, it was during the, it was during the uh, like the like the the rampant part of the uh, the panini. Yeah, pandemic. Yeah, really early into like the into the pandemic here, where we just started this. And we're looking for any kind of entertainment. Yeah, because we didn't know what this podcast was. We well, it only took us five episodes to get that <laughs> desperate to watch the Star Wars holiday special. So that just shows where our lives were at that point in time. Well, and it shows where the show was. I mean, we did that, and I think yeah. the first four episodes were like ranking video, were like ranking episodes. Mm-hmm. We ranked our favorite Pixar movie, our favorite community episodes. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> what mm-hmm. a time! What a time! Speaking of, Here we are almost casting. Forward. Yeah, speaking of casting news for a movie that's releasing like that one date in like July twenty twenty five or whatever. We have a casting announcement for Superman Legacy. However, unlike the Fantastic Four movie, this isn't our first casting announcement. This is like our eighth casting announcement or something. Um, and this is uh, Nicholas Holt has officially been cast as Lex Luthor in Superman Legacy, which this is crazy for Nicholas Holt because he auditioned for both... Batman in a different movie, and then Superman for this the movie here was turned down for both, and then got cast as as Lex Luthor, which is kind of wow. like the most Lex Luthor casting <laughs> back. So I have high hopes for him. They created the a villain. Yeah, the yeah. I just know he can't be as bad as the yeah. Lex Luthor. From Batman versus Superman, which like the Eisenberg, yeah, n- yeah, no fault to that actor at all. I've seen him d- do great things in like other movies. I just hated how Lex Luthor was written as a character. I hate the direction that he was given. That did not strike me as Lex Luthor at all. And I have high hopes for Lex Luthor here. Uh, I had I didn't know it was Lex Luthor until after I looked up after the movie. Really? No idea. Oh, or no, wow. maybe it was when he like shaved his head or something. Because he just like yep. wasn't he just suddenly bald at some point in the movie? Yep. They I I I legitimately think he goes to prison and because he's in prison, they're like, oh, we're gonna shave your head. <laughs> and that's just it. And it did not make sense. It was just bad. It was just yeah. really bad. Cannot I not be as bad I, as Jesse Eisenberg's. I try my best to just block that movie from my mind. Although like I went back and, and like I rewatched it. It was like the extended cut or whatever, like Zack Snyder's cut of that movie. Why? And that cut was actually a lot more solid than the actual movie itself. So much stuff was actually good in 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 that movie, but the whole Lex Luthor arc just still sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I, I I'm just glad like the DC universe is getting a chance to start over because there's a lot they could do to improve and retconning everything's a great start. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, next piece of information uh, from Screen Geek. The Silver Surfer in Marvel's Fantastic Four MCU reboot re- will reportedly be a woman. Mm-hmm. And then you replied to that saying, LOL, I love the implication that there's any script planned out. <laughs> and I still stand by that completely. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> all of these news articles talking about, like, oh, this was going to be, be about, this is what it's going to be about. Here's who's... Re- Rumored to be casted. Here's who's rumored to be casted, and we we got l- rumors and leaks like two years ago f- f- for that movie. Yeah, and we've only just now. There only one actor has been cast right now. That script has been rewritten like eight times. So we're kind of see if that's true. Awesome. If it's not true. Awesome. It doesn't matter because this movie is never coming out. Pretty much. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I am with that. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, I mean I've been saying this for, for how long? And like even in this in this in this conversation in direct messages on, on Twitter. I'll believe it when I see it. Like I'll I I will not believe this movie's coming out until I'm sitting in a theater and Fantastic mm-hmm. Four flashes across my uh, across the screen. I will not yeah. gonna believe it. I'm not going to believe it even when there's a trailer. Like, if a trailer drops, I'm like, that looks dope. I wish it was for an actual m- movie and not just art. Um, right? right? That's kind of how um, I feel about, that's how I feel about the, uh, the, 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 not Morbius, what the hell? The movie called? Fuck. Uh, Cr- uh, Craven. I don't think yeah, that movie's uh, happening. Yep. We got a trailer, yep. sure, but that didn't mean anything. That movie was supposed to release this past like October or whatever, they yeah. had it done, but they just pushed it off for for a year. For, for, stuff like for that some happened, reason, I'm, I'm like, yeah, this movie does not exist. It doesn't That's exist. As simple as that. Yeah, it's not. Um, but it is funny with this rumor specifically because I I remember seeing this rumor in a lot of places. His rumor dropped, and also at the exact same time, there was a rumor that Anya Taylor Joy was being eyed for a. I saw that, yeah. Helen role in uh, the Fantastic Four movie. And I felt crazy when I immediately connected those two dots in, like, in my mind. Like, Silver Surfer is reportedly a woman. Anya Taylor-Joy is reportedly going to have a role in the Fantastic Four movie. That seemed such an obvious connection. And still, like, two weeks went by before I saw, like, the first clickbait article of like oh is Anya Taylor Joy the silver surfer I was like why did it take somebody th- this long like all these like clickbait sites where they push out as much content as possible why did it take somebody this long to jump to that conclusion that I jumped to immediately um which I like that would honestly be a really cool role to see her in I think she would knock that out of the park completely but I also don't want her attached to this movie for the same reason I really wish Pedro Pascal was not attached to this movie. On it, there's not a bad. I've never seen on it, a bad on it Taylor Joy movie. Mm-hmm. I just haven't. She's phenomenal. I, I'm actually interested to see. I've never seen like a Mad Max movie at all. It was in a the theater. I saw a trailer for like. Oh yeah, that's right. She's in the for Mad Max, Furiosa or whatever, no. starring her. Like that actually looks like a really good movie here so that might be getting into theaters because i don't think so far i've seen her in a bad role either who knows maybe she could single-handedly save uh she could she could break what i'm uh calling like uh, the fantastic four curse (laughs) Uh, because i would really like yeah I would, I would really like there to be a good Fantastic Four movie out. You and me both. I mean, so far it has never happened. Nope. Hope maybe maybe this and you know this might go the way of the '90s movie. It's just like, oh, we made one, but it's so bad it's never going to see the light of day. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, next piece of news: we're going back to Star Wars. Remember when we used to have structure and we used to go by Star Wars and then Marvel and then and then like whatever and then yeah, nah. not anymore. Because I don't take notes anymore. <laughs> Uh, Dave Filoni on uh, Ray Stevenson and the future of Balin's skull. He said, obviously, there's a story there. 
we're in a wait and see pattern at this point, but I'm glad the conversation is about Ray and how great he was. <laughs> I used to have many debates with him say, Ray, you're the villain here. And he'd be like, I don't think so. And I was like, I know you don't think so, but you are. I love that you're playing it like you're not, which is exactly the way Balin thinks, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. also interested to see the future of uh, Balin's skull. Yeah. Um, see, the interesting thing with this is we are no longer in a wait and see period. Some very recent news. Ahsoka has been confirmed for a season two. Yeah. So they're going to have to to do something here. Uh, I think something that, that like I've said, and I believe you echoed it as well, but for me, Balin's scroll was one of my favorite parts yep. of Ahsoka. Seeing him and Shen was fantastic. I loved their uh, dynamic. His presence on screen was just phenomenal throughout the entire show, start to, to end. So I like it sucks that we won't have uh, his like gravitas or whatever you want to call it helping to carry the show forward. I loved how he approached the the character and and like what Dave Filoni was uh, talking about in that story there. And like it's going to be hard to have the show without him yeah and i think the 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 love his character has gotten brings up a big a really big point i think about star wars i think about quite often um is that i i think they and maybe this is a hot take i don't know i think they've beaten this the the skywalker the skywalker saga and everything around it to death and original new characters are like like just such like such a breath of fresh air (laughs) Um, when I and I think which is why Mandal the Mandalorian got as popular as it did, um, because there's so many different stories to tell in Star Wars, and I think people are starting to gravitate toward more yeah. uh, new characters, which is why I think the books are getting as popular as they were as they are, yeah. and why the original Legends books were as popular as they were because there's just new characters to explore. Yeah, um, so there's like, a reason the Mandalorian was so popular when it was like this own unique thing apart from the rest of Star Wars. Yeah, and then as soon as it started to tie very heavily back into a story that general audiences did not care about at all, it immediately crashed. Yeah, yeah. And and they kind of tried to go back to that in the third season. It just didn't work as well for whatever reason. No, because, like, the third season was still tied way too much up in, like, whatever complex story they're yeah. trying to build up to. Season two was, like, this stepping point. I thought it was pretty solid up until the finale yeah it was great but it was like trying to build it up to something and then they just as soon as it got to like the book of boba fett and mandalorian season three it was off the rails completely and we beat that horse to death that's, several that's times on on this show that but. horse is bones at this point but we're still beating it with anger mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh no well we can but we'll get to it we'll get there so, hold, yes, hold your deep. horses yep, yep. Hold um, your dead horses. <laughs> I'm reeling him back in, reeling back in the bones. Re- reeling, reeling back in just, just so I could beat him again. No, um, but I think that's why I'm so drawn to the High Republic. Um, it's like just completely outside the scope of the, the, the Skywalker saga. And don't get me wrong, I love the Skywalkers, Anakin, Luke, Leia, all them. But I love the High Republic so much because it's a completely different story with all these different brand new characters. And I can't wait to see it come to li- life on yeah. screen. Either this year or next, I don't remember exactly when it's supposed to happen. The uh, High Republic show that's coming. Oh, interesting. But um, um, I think I sent you something down in our part of yeah, like probably the the shows uh, uh, releasing soon. So yeah, we can so. look at that when when we run to it. Yeah, um, no. yeah. Like the last note that I'll add there is like, yeah, Star Wars is definitely the most interesting when it's telling character focused stories. And you can tell stories within the Skywalker saga uh, and have them be really good as long as you're sticking to that uh, character focus here. And like, I know you don't like Andor as much as as like I do, but like Andor is great example. Yeah, yeah, Andor is in the Skywalker saga, but it's such like an Andor focused story. It's not. 
trying to to like be like, oh, we're cool because we can show you all this stuff with all these other characters and what's going on. It's like, no, it's focusing on the character and the world around this character through his viewpoint. And there's something so beautiful about that, not just having to 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 like kind of do like that whole like PowerPoint slide of like, oh, look at this cool thing with hand service. So yeah. well, and I think it's similar with uh I think and I think that's that's kind of why um what's it called did so well. Um Rogue One. I think that's why Rogue One did so well. Yeah. It's such yeah. a good it's a story within the Skywalker saga, but it's not focused on the Skywalkers per se. It's exactly. a Skywalker adjacent. Exactly. Really. Um and I think and some of my favorite books in the Star Wars universe are from Rogue One and like mm -hmm. the story surrounding it, which again has some has, you know, it has a little bit of Darth Vader, has has a little Darth uh, Sidious in it, but it's not mm -hmm. all about them, which is great yeah. in my opinion. And, yeah. Um, I can't wait for Star Wars to start letting people tell more of those stories on screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, but anyway, um, the next piece of news was actually one that you brought up about Anya Taylor Joy. Yep. So we'll we skip, that, skip that. Uh, what was this one? It's disappeared. The post is gone. So I guess it's not real news. You said. Heck yeah. I said heck yeah I'm to it. it so I was okay. excited about it, but I don't awesome. remember what it was. Yeah. We got a teaser for Agatha the Dark our Agatha Darkhold Diaries, which I think has changed name again since the last time we talked about it. Uh no, I no, it yeah. Yeah. Agatha Darkhold Diaries was the third name, and I think they've changed it for a third time now gotcha. to Agatha all along. And I think okay. they've announced that as the final title. I believe they changed no. it because it was <laughs> Agatha happens. House of Harkness, Agatha Coven of Chaos, Agatha Darkhold Diaries, now Agatha all along. But at the time the teaser was released, they were still calling it Agatha Darkhold Diaries. Which, by the way, all those names, terrible. Terrible names. Yeah. Ag House of Harkness is probably the best of them. Yeah, but it's no. still not good. That's exactly what, what I was going to say. So I think my favorite title is Agatha House of Harkness. What was the second that, one? Uh, Coven of Chaos. That's not terrible, Coven but... Chaos. Yeah, like, I like Coven of Chaos. I just think Agatha House of Harkness is cooler. Um, um, Darkhold but, Diaries yeah. sucks. It's like the worst one. Easy. Yep. Terrible. Yep. What, was in, what was the new one? Agatha All Along, which is the callback That's to the... That's song worse from, than the Dark from Diaries. From WandaVision, yeah. It just makes it sound like a sitcom because that's what the song was about, yeah. kind of. That's terrible. So, anyway, we got a teaser. The teaser looked kind of cool. I don't remember a whole lot about it, but... It, it just neat. showed behind the scenes. So it looks yeah. like they're filming it, but I've heard nothing about it. Yeah, there were some scenes that like we saw just quick glimpses the scenes look cool it looks to have like a very like itchy kind of a supernatural vibe which yeah. looks neat um i don't believe it is a releasing ever it's not <laughs> gonna be a show that's exactly that's, what you said too yeah i yeah i am on yeah like holly i 100 agree with everything you've been saying about these shows, not releasing, you're absolutely right. These shows <laughs> do not exist. They are making them for tax write-off purposes. That's how this is going. Disney hasn't started that yet, I don't think. But they are they are picking up on some ideas for some money-saving techniques. Uh, you can do that when you're... They, they need it. Disney or, or Marvel. They need it. They're hemorrhaging mm -hmm. money. If they didn't have the parks, they'd be screwed. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, That's what it sounds like. Which, by the way, speak on the <sighs> on the topic of Agatha. Apparently, I saw earlier today. It's been four years since, like, four years to the day since One Division came out. I saw three years. Oh yeah, you're right. Three years. It was 2021, yeah. not 2020. Yeah. Yep. 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 So yeah, we're Either like three way. years out from when Agatha all along was like a pop culture hit, and they still haven't released the follow up show that they're either filming or are done. Filming or something. We beat this drum at the time. When are we going to see these characters again? I mean, again, it's another horse we've beaten to death. Yep. It's been three and, years. And 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 also kind of like a a better question. Also, we're talking about like the state of the MCU as a whole, where they're trying to 
build up to some Korean story here. What is the significance of Agatha as a character? Because you like how are, there's there's only so much like degree you can have of like a spinoff show of a spinoff show of a spinoff show of a movie off of a like off of a, a movie like you can't keep going down a rabbit hole because eventually it's like why are you making these because the grand story you're trying to tell doesn't relate to these characters right and it doesn't really seem like you're doing it because you care about the characters because it just like a lot of your programming recently has seemed like just like um marketing like way to get money here yeah so and it's not worked no no one's going to see the movies this is just a movie thing in general no one's going to movie theaters because, like, they know it's going to be on streaming services in a couple of months. Yeah, which is a it's a, it's a topic of discussion for another day. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I this movie this show's not happening. This show doesn't exist. Yeah. Marvel doesn't exist. It's actually collapsed. I'm fairly certain, and mm-hmm. they're just releasing what is left before they yeah. <laughs> before it's over. Ironheart, I'm a million percent sure, does not exist. So that was, I think, originally supposed to release right after Black Panther. Two or before uh, Black Panther two, right? And I think we found out on a recent episode of this, like of this podcast here, that it has completed filming, and they just aren't doing anything with it. Yep, nothing. And like they like have like openly admitted that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. the The next thing is the Star Wars thing, but the link is dead. So hold on, let me see if yeah. I can find something. Well, and because like that's not even true now, um, because I think that was like an old tweet, and then they confirm horror shows that are uh releasing. So we'll probably find the correct tweet. So as as we continue scrolling, so, so it looks mm-hmm. like there's gonna be a couple things coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Two of them animated. So it looks like we're gonna we are getting the Alco Acolyte this year, which is the the High Republic show. Oh, this is a co- this is as yeah, of December did. twenty December twenty twentieth, I think of twenty twenty three. On this, this is screen. We rant. got a trailer. Line. We did. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got a tr- we got a teaser trailer for the Acolyte. I'm pretty sure that was an official release of that, or I just saw a really high quality leak. You saw a leak because they showed okay. it at a. Comic Con or Star Wars Celebration or something last year. Interesting. And I think a couple videos got online. I also saw like parts of something. But so that comes out next year. I'm that's the Um, one I'm just super excited about. It comes out next year or this this year. This year. Did I say next year? I meant this year. Sorry. Comes out 2024. Bad Batch season three is supposedly coming out this year. I did see that. I am excited for that. I'm probably excited. I am too. Like the most out of any of these and then uh tales i remember this tales of the jedi season two is coming out so that one is yes confirmed now okay yes according to screen rant as of like two weeks as of like three weeks ago it'll be interesting to see who they focus on yes i agree the first see the first season was really really good i really enjoyed it yes it added a lot of depth to count dooku yeah they need to keep that energy up Mm-hmm. What I don't want them to do is just revisit uh, Ahsoka and, and Dooku. Because, like, as much as I would love to see more of their stories, it's like... Do it elsewhere, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I want to expand, like, just like how they expanded on the depth of those characters, I want them to take that energy and apply it to, like, Balin Scroll, Kanan Jarrus. Okay. Um, how about and I, I guess they can't do this because it's called Tales yeah, of the Jedi. Huh? Yeah. I guess they can't do this because it's called Tales of the Jedi. But Count Dooku did fall, not a Jedi, when we knew him. Mm-hmm. What if they did an episode or like the, a string of episodes or whatever, half the season on Sidious? Interesting. I think that'd be very interesting because then we yeah. get act- we actually see the the play out of Darth Plagueis. Yeah, yeah. What would also be really interesting and like I don't know if like they would do it, but if they do go for more of like a 
Tales of the Sith mm-hmm. angle. Uh, if we get to see uh, in like that same animation style a lot of content with uh, Darth Vader uh, being Darth Vader when he was at his most oh, yeah. brutal between episodes three and four, that would be wild. That'd be really cool. And and it'd be a, and and it would help to give not like any insight into his character, because I'm pretty sure we have all like like all the insight we would <laughs> ever need, but just some more because it's it's like we've seen so much of him in that same kind of art animation style as Anakin um yeah Skywalker yeah. and seeing how he is in that style as Vader, I think would give a lot of cool uh, contrast. Yeah, uh, I agree. That being said, that's not what I would also like. Like that, like that would be a cool thing to see on a, on a list of wants. I would have that would be pretty low on the list because I what my hope is 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 that they do focus on more kind of niche characters and just. S- s- uh, instead, not saying uh, Ahsoka and Count Dooku were niche characters right. personally, but at that point in time, we had a lot less content about them than we did with some of the larger characters. Right, right. And now, did uh, season yeah, one know, come out last year or was that 2022? I mean, like, Count Dooku and Ahsoka, we did have a lot of content about Ahsoka, especially, but like, it, it was just neat to get to see more. At a different angle, you know what I'm talking yeah, yeah. about. Well, I, like, I think it came out not this past year, not 2023. I think that came out 2022. Okay, gotcha. So they remember because, like, I was gonna say it was like the year of Ahsoka if it came out last year because I know 2022 yeah, yeah. was the year of uh, Obi, oh, it was the year of Hayden Christensen sure. and a bunch of different things. So, yeah, okay. Um, I, I think if I had to name two characters, I would name uh. Alan Scroll yep. and yep. Kanan Jarrus, I think, would be the I two I would choose. I would love to see young Yoda. Ooh, yeah. There, I mean, he's been alive for 900 years. We know very little about those 900 yeah. years. But there we know is... the tail end of it. We know, uh, you know, the 30 years before the tail end of it. And then, if, like, and then if you read comics and stuff like that, you know about 200 years before it. And, and that's the... It. the... Young Jedi Adventures animated show, which I don't know if that does anything at all to add to the lore of Star Wars, but I no, I have I watched some of it. That, it's neat, but that like Yoda is like the character. He gives like, some missions and there. stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, Yoda. I mean, I think I think it was just kind of that way in the in like Clone Wars and stuff. Maybe not. But Yoda during the High Republic was he trained the younglings, like that was his that was his job. Was he yeah, his yeah. So, um, yeah, he starts off in like the prequel trilogy, doing a lot of the training. But then when like the real Clone Wars time, I don't think he's doing that right here as much. Right. Um, and then the other the last thing that come out, which so we took a, we took a while on that one, but the last thing that come out is Skeleton Crew. Which is a Jude Law movie. Oh, the John Watts movie. Yeah. Um, that's coming out this year as which well. Which is or show, weird. show, show, show. It's not a movie. It's a show. Yeah, they're releasing a Lego set for that show, and I think hey, so if they're releasing that in May, I'd like to think the show would be out around that At time. Least relatively well. soon. Yeah. But I do know that, like. Because usually it's like a project real like uh releases and it's almost always like a couple months before, like right around the time we get the trailer that like the Lego sets a release, or it's well after that all of that takes place. Right. But recently, with how Disney's had to delay so many things, we've gotten Lego content long before the project comes out. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't 
I don't know if we'll end up seeing skeleton crew around May or whenever the set's su supposed to release, or if it'll be like an end of the year type thing. We'll just have the set long beforehand. Yeah, I was looking. It doesn't seem like there's like a release date for anything. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about it, though, because, again, I kind of like what we went back to earlier. It's original characters. And we've never seen them before. Yep. yep I feel yep. like a lot of people are going to latch on the show. Uh, and it's the first thing we're getting after uh, or post uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker. So, yeah, I believe it's Wait. post Rise of Skywalker. Oh, y yeah, I that's what I heard. I don't know if that changed. Oops. I don't know either. So. But if if it, if it hasn't. I'm glad because we need because we've gotten absolutely nothing, not even in books or comics about after or after Rise of Skywalker. So we're gonna get a movie in the next several years with Yep, New Jedi. Hey. Yeah, that's the next one they're doing. Maybe we'll get to more details with that later. Mm -hmm. Um Hollywood the, what is this? The Hollywood what? Harold? Handle, I Handle? think. Has uh, they announced in December that Echo X Men ninety seven Agatha Darkhold Diaries are now Agatha all along are confirmed Marvel Studios shows that will be releasing in twenty twenty four. So so far they were correct on one of those counts. Mm -hmm. That's Echo. I don't believe the other two <laughs> exist. Like, <laughs> but we will find out. Yeah, like X Men ninety seven. I'm hoping gets released because that was one that was supposed to get uh released last year. And got delayed. <laughs> and that was one of the things I was talking about in terms of Lego sets because they released a line of Lego uh any figures in like the like in the blind bags or whatever. And the characters from the X-Men 97 shows were um were like among that lot. And to show you how long that show has been del delayed for, that Lego any figure. Uh, line like uh debuted and, and is now closed it's like it's now discontinued and the show is still not out bright side it could just be classic characters they released because it's a show from the 90s mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. at least they're justified but like the fact that they released yep. and discontinued the line before the show even was rebooted is mm -hmm. pardon my french fucking hilarious yeah i was also at spirit Halloween like sh shopping in like early October for Halloween and yeah. they had original X-Men costumes with the X-Men 97 logo on the packaging for the costumes. A show that no one could have seen because it's still <laughs> not out <laughs> the following year. Oh, what a and what a mess. It's what so the hell funny. happened to Mar Marvel's me. fall from it wasn't graceful. It was a Yeah. It was a brutal fall. Yeah, it's it's it was it was, like, it was Peter I mean, Griffin falling down the stairs. Brutal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm just hoping because now with like the start of the year, they release some new uh Lego Marvel sets and like their Lego like uh, what I'm sure are X Men ninety seven sets that are now out. I'm just hoping that that the show comes out during the actual run of the Lego sets themselves <laughs> because if if not, oh well. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll have the show out in time for next Halloween. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, Paramount has made a bid for Coyote vs. Acme. For a 2024 theatrical release, Amazon is still considering but hasn't made a bid yet. Uh, Warner Brothers is playing hardball and they're expecting to get more than $70 million for the film. Do you have any more updates on this? That It just drives me crazy because what do you mean they're playing Hardball. They were planning to just write it off and lock it in in into their vault because they thought it could get more value from just the tax write off than an actual movie release. You had no faith in it then. Now you're getting more than the tax write off could have given you, and you're like, our stuff is worth more than that. It's like, no, it's not. The proof <laughs> that is you. <laughs> Um, so uh, it's, it's driving me a little crazy. I'm so glad that there was pressure put on them to get this movie out there. I'm hoping that can be repeated with like the, the Scoob sequel that they locked up and the, the Batgirl movie that I still really want to see. Yeah, me too. Um, but should, I don't have we, much hope for those. I am we, glad that 
we, we should we should buy the Batgirl movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Put it out we, under uh, we, it? Uh, Wolfgate Entertainment. Yeah, we kind of or that we just have to. Well, what? clearly they don't think it. Me, they clearly don't think it's worth anything. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Pay twenty bucks for we'll put on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. But do you have any updates on this? Because I was back in um, December. Yeah, I think the only thing, the the only update, I don't know if I sent it to you or not, but there was in there was like an actual frame from the movie that someone who worked on the project was able to uh, tweet out Steal. or or post. No, no, no. They were able to actually post it and say, hey coming soon no, which no. makes it seem like a deal was finalized no no no, no. we no, we hope they stole it so that they would put so that we could put more pressure on them to sell it <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah so it it does seem like a some sort of deal was finalized that's good and we can actually see something from this movie and it looks good so that's i'm good. hoping i will get to Watch it one day here. Eventually. Mm-hmm. Eventually, we will Eventually. see the movie. Maybe. Probably not. Yeah. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it doesn't exist. No. Just like the Marvel movies. Speaking mm-hmm. of Marvel, Marvel just confirmed their animation slate for 2024, which again, we which again also includes X-Men 97. It also includes Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, renamed Spider-Man Freshman Year, and Eyes of Wakanda. Mm-hmm. None of which are going to happen, but they're they've been announced. The Spider-Man show scares me. It scares you. It really scares me because when they first released images and stuff from the show, it looked so good, and I was excited was, right? to see the show. Yes, the original concept art was two D. Then it was canceled. Then it was brought back, which is cool. But it looked like when they brought it back, they were saying, hey, it's not 2D anymore. We're changing it to the 3D what if style animation. And my heart sank a lot with that announcement because it looked really good before. And if they're starting from square one, redoing it, including everything, including the animation style, that doesn't sound great. And we haven't seen any new concept art or anything for it. And now it's getting released here. It feels like they're just kind of doing like an, like an easy push. They're just saying, hey, we're not going to put a lot into this. We're just kind of kind of like shovel this out. And I was really hoping it would be good because Spider-Man has had a lot of of like animated shows, they've gone all different uh, directions here. But well, it's the like the one that's currently out, or the one that's most recently out, I've heard is incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I was hoping they could do something like that because the Spider-Man c- cartoons I always liked as a kid. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. just do that again. This isn't a hard thing. Like a Fantastic Four movie where you've had a horrible track record here. This is what you are the most successful at. Right. So why take something that a lot of people were excited about and change it in a way that looks like it's not going to be great. So I'm scared. I would be too. If it, I would be too, if it was going to happen, but yeah, it's not. So um, at least I hope, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you. All kidding aside. Um, I'm sick of 3d animation, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's nothing like, wrong with you, it. Just I'm sick of it. You can do some cool things with it. It's just like, <laughs> played out yeah i just like the 2d animation style more i I always have i don't think i'll change that easily unless something happens yeah yeah like like the only like 3d animation style i've liked is like uh is eight clone wars rebels bad batch all like all that that style i absolutely love but like the what if style, other kind of similar 3D animation styles, I just, they, it's just, it's like dude, 2D. It would be c- cooler. Yeah, I agree. I agree. 
Um, um, and then the Eyes of Wakanda series, I. I don't know what that is. It just announced it for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. What? The, I'm hoping it's not the same 3D animation style, but uh, we will see. Yeah. We will see. I don't know what it is, but it sounds cool, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it, do you know who deserves a 2D animated show? No. Who I think would be phenomenal in it. Mrs. Marvel or Miss Marvel. Yeah. Oh, that would yeah. Be awesome. A yeah. 2D animated show with her. Yep. Um. Next piece of news. James Gunn says Matt Reeves's Arkham Asylum series is now set in the DCU, which yeah. I don't know what that means. Are they talking about the comic book or the comic mm-hmm. strip, comic mm-hmm. line, comic? Oh no, no. There is so there was like the Matt Reeves Batman movie. That's kidding. The Penguin series on oh, Max no. soon. And the Batman. Is that what that's called? The Arkham Doom. Asylum series? No, there's also an Arkham Asylum series that's like in the works. So they're building up like a like the Batman universe separate from the uh, TCU. But now the Arkham Asylum series that was supposed to be in the Batman universe is actually being moved into the uh, DCU instead. Interesting, because Which I know we've had a wild. conversation about, like a while ago, when the, when the Batman, Matt Reeves Batman came out, that we thought, we didn't think that Batman would play, would do well with the other superheroes. Yeah, yeah. Do or, you still or, have that opinion? Like, like, at least not yet. Not, not at his current s- stage. Because, like, that Batman character, he's still in a journey. He's still working out like, like, like the like the universe that he's in, where he's at, just the small local Gotham problems. You cannot throw a character like that into like the DC universe as a whole uh-huh. and have the same investment from audience members and be able to just tell those same stories right still you have to kind of build up to that so i'm so content with that batman thing in his own own world while we get a different batman at a different part of his journey in the tc uh you now i do think for the batman like i don't think there should be a whole like movie universe set up around him but it's like I get wanting to kind of do some more st- stuff at these characters here. Uh-huh. Um, so the Arkham Asylum show, yeah, sure, have that flesh out his villain some more. Absolutely, moving that into the DCU, so it's not tied to that Batman character. It's tied to a different Batman we haven't met. Oh, we haven't met yet at all. That's a big choice. Wait, is that is that what that means? Is that what they're doing? So they're not moving my Robert Pattinson's Batman in there? Nope, nope. Interesting. Yeah, they're just taking the Arkham Asylum show and instead of developing developing it around that Batman, they're developing they're developing it around the Batman and the DCU instead. Interesting. Uh man. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a bold decision to make, and I'm yeah. not really sure it's the best decision to make. I feel like they're going to confuse a lot of people. Like the DCU is already going to be super confusing, but when you have like a Batman themed show released in the same style as like a Batman movie that just came out, but it's not connected in like any way. All of a sudden, it's 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 connected to another Batman we haven't met yet. That'll be wild. Yeah, that'll be hard for general general audiences to keep track of. Yeah, if it's someone who, because I don't know, because like you're not gonna have general audiences like seeking out all of the all the DC shows and movies, but like I don't. There's, there's gonna be a weird line that like has to be walked. We're just gonna have to have to see how it looks in 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 execution. Execution. I don't. I don't really know if I'd be able to offer up a final judgment for all that yet. 
Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting for sure. We'll 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 see how. What what's the line from Dodgeball? Bold move, Cotton. Let's see. Let's see how. Let's see how it works out. Sure. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that 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 a movie. So oh, I will. That's a good movie you should watch. I will take your word for it for right now. <sighs> um, the next piece of news was something we discussed earlier. Thirteen days after, they were like, "Yeah, hey, they'll fire him." They fired him. They fired Dunn from Majors on the the thirteenth, the twenty, the eighteenth of December. Mm-hmm. They changed uh Kang Dynasty to Avengers Five, which we now know is uh, what's the word? Oh, Avengers, uh, Secret Wars 2. Oh, yeah. We don't know that for a fact, but it's, like, heavily rumored, I'm pretty sure. We do know that as a fact because it's never happening. They can, I can call whatever I want. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, and then Brennan, Brennan sent me this news. It was an interesting piece of news because I thought it was news. Like, I thought it was, like, current news. I was, nope. like, I was like, what? Like, really? Like, wait a second, that's today. Yeah. It's November 23rd. It was a dream. Yeah, like December on on December eleventh, twenty twenty three, or sorry, on twenty oh. December eleventh, twenty twenty. Yes, it, it was announced that Star Wars Rogue Squadron was to be released December twenty second, twenty twenty third. We're sitting here January fifteenth, twenty twenty four. That obviously did not happen. Yep, that movie is. I believe it, it has been canceled. canceled. Yes. Oh, yeah. They 100% canceled it. No, like they have officially come out and said it's canceled. Canceled, I believe. Yep. 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 I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, which is um, unfortunate because I was excited for that movie when they announced it. That was like yep. one of the very ones I was excited for. They have, the, they have, they, Star Wars has a weird track record of doing this, but at least they don't like hype us up a lot about it. Yeah. Before yeah. destroying it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Like, 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 like all this uh, Disney owned stuff, like Star Wars and 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 Marvel, and just there have been other companies too. But I absolutely love this trend I've been so seeing on on a Twitter where someone will go back and they'll quote tweet and like an old announcement like that one and being like, "Oh yeah, I love this movie. I love when this." Happened the movie. I love this this actor's role. Everyone just gives like fake re- reviews for a movie that was supposed to release <laughs> that day, and it's the funniest thing. So, it, but it's it just like the reason, like it, it's just sad that the reason it is a trend is because so many st- st- studios just they'll release, they'll like announce movies and just cancel them, and, and it sucks. It does, yeah, yeah. Um, next piece of news: Steven Yoon. Has officially dropped out of playing Sentry in the Thunderbolts, another movie that's never gonna fucking happen. Yeah, this is wild too because, it, like, it was only so recently confirmed. Like, I mean, it was rumored for months and months and months that this was right. true, mm-hmm. and it was only like I think a month prior to this happening that it was finally officially confirmed, and then a month later he's dropping out, which is wild that it was even confirmed. I thought this movie had. Filmed. I thought this movie was too. done filming, but the fact that he's dropped out, I guess they hadn't filmed it yet. Which More like his parts and they have to rewrite the fucking movie. Dude, what is Marvel doing? Why? Why they should just stop? It's and then come like, back later. It's so funny because I, I like like every update I see from them. There's either a movie that they have fully filmed and just aren't releasing, and the movies that they want to release but haven't filmed. Any of at but it was all. script for half, and there's no in between. There's no in between. I only see stuff from like a couple of movies, like allegedly Captain America Four is filming. Allegedly, oh, yeah. I Deadpool about that. Three is filming, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Certainly not us. And and like I think the reason is because so much of Marvel stuff is like filmed like backstage on a on a green screen somewhere ex- like exclusively. I've only seen the announcements about Deadpool filming that I've seen because they're filming on on location. And that's it. And it just it just sucks. Yeah. Like I said, Marvel is they're on something right now and it's not a bender, not a heater. More like a colder. Yeah. Now we're getting um 
more current with news with that piece of news. 13 days ago. Know, we officially moved into this year. <laughs> yes. We're officially on to 2024 news. Mm-hmm. The Mandal- mm-hmm. I can't believe it's six days. Oh, no. Sorry, six days ago. Mm-hmm. Mandalorian and Grogu have been announced. The movie's in the works. Uh, John Favreau is set to direct. This, I just, this is the John Favreau movie we heard about. It's a Mandalorian and Grogu movie. Yeah. I, a lot of people are concerned that that's the title. And I'm here to tell you that it probably is. Yeah. They oh, named what? the damn show Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know what? That's a good point. I was treating it and as like... Andor. <laughs> I was treating it as like a working title in my mind, but this, this might actually be, be the genuine title. I hadn't thought about it that before. Uh, that's going to suck, kind of, <laughs> if that is. Star Wars is bad at coming up with titles. Yeah. What I've seen some confusion about online is there was like a... Uh, and uh the movie that was announced and and confirmed this is not that movie at all this is no. a separate movie from the from the, the the mandoverse movie and the interesting thing about this is uh the so the oh that's right i forgot dave well, filoni's supposed to do the mandoverse movie isn't he i not, think so. not john fever okay i guess that makes sense then but yeah the uh uh, season four of The Mandalorian was apparently already fed in. They had apparently already scripted it out. Uh-huh. But now there's a push for, from executives to essentially throw out season four. And instead of season four, to this movie and then make sequels to this movie. I know and why. Make the, and make The Mandalorian stuff movies instead of shows. I know why. I know exactly why. Because they keep bombing at the box office with yep. Disney crap. And you know what? Do you know what people love? They love Grogu. Yep. So what if yep. we make people go to the movies to see Grogu? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. exactly why they're doing it. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're hundred percent right. Because they keep bombing because Disney's bombing at the box office. Everyone's bombing at the box office because quite because like I like I said earlier, people aren't going to the movie theater because they're gonna be on their streaming service in a month. Yeah. Half and the reason see- I don't go to movie theaters. Also, they're really <laughs> far away from me. <laughs> yep 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 and the and like yeah because like you know i didn't like the and in season three yeah. and i would love to think oh yeah the problem is that it's a show if they turn it into movies they'll fix all their all their problems it'll be perfect it'll be like a flawless star wars movie best of its kind it's exactly yeah I, that's what you were saying in a couple episodes ago right yeah, I I would be shocked if that happened here. I think if anything, this will make it worse. Worse, which will yes. be really bad. So, uh, like, I'm still optimistic here. Maybe they'll be able to correct things. We'll see. Here's the thing. There are a couple shows, like we've talked about this, we've beaten this dead. We've beaten this horse to death. We like to beat horses, apparently, on this show. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That the pacing is so weird that they probably should be movies. Yep. And one of those, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, spoiler alert, not spoiler alert, Echo is kind of like that. Oh yeah. Mandalorian's not one of those not one of those shows. No. But well, like I said, it's a cash grab. Except like for Grogu, they're using Grogu as a cash grab. Season three. Season three, the like the pacing was super weird. There was a lot of Season three, I was like, this could have been a movie here. But seasons one and two, pacing was perfect for a show. It's like, this is a show, and this should be one. Well, so that's probably why they brought Grogu, Grogu back in the first place. The executives were like, you know, that makes us money, so like you should bring him back. Yeah. It's like, 100% and why. And we'll bring him back in this show. They're like, good. Mm-hmm. And then people who don't watch Book of Boba Fett, and we've said this a million times, so let's not well, let's not say it again. Yeah. Uh, Ahsoka season two has been confirmed, which you said earlier, which is yeah. interesting. Not really sure where they're gonna go from here. I guess just their escape from that planet. Yeah. No. What I'm hoping is there's a lot on the planet. Like we saw. Like I mean, this is a planet very deeply tied to the horse here. Oh, the lore is going to be incredible. 
Yeah, so like I'm hoping that that like they do more with that. Don't worry about what's happening back in the Star Wars galaxy here. Focus on a new story here with these characters, a nice like self-contained outside of the Skywalker saga story of this planet. The show I'm is called terrified. Ahsoka, not Rebels. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm I'm I'm, ter- I'm terrified they're gonna like split things up between like what's going on with Ahsoka on this planet. And like all the rest of the rebels gang back in like the main Star Wars universe here, what's going on with Thrawn? They'll probably do that. I'm hoping that they don't. I want a self contained story with the Soka, Sabine, Balin, and Shen. And yeah, I guess that's it, right? They're going to call call Mando. You know that, right? (laughs) What's the robot? K two S O is that his name or is that a different one? That's a different one. It's a different one. Mister something. What's this guy's name? I don't remember. I, I just should. keep talking. I'm I, I I'm hoping they they do that kind of self contained story for his Hocus season. Hu Yang, Hu Yang, or Ho Yang, Hong, Hu Yang, yeah. Hu Yang, yeah. Okay. Anyway, but yeah, we talked. In- about his focus season two here. Uh, yeah, moving on, we got an international poster from Adam Webb. It's so funny. If you look at it, doesn't look like any of them were photographed at the same time at at all. Um, costumes, uh, I'm... Floating head posters, hell yeah. yeah. Those costumes look like they came from like a from like a spirit Halloween. It, it like I'm I'm so excited for this it, the movie <laughs> in a way I cannot describe. Um, oh the yeah, next and that part is important. Yeah, that brings us something that, that happened very recently here with the release of Echo. The Marvel uh, Netflix shows, as they're they're known as, even though they're not on Netflix anymore. Are now MCU canon. Yep, or Which, they are allegedly MCU canon in the fact that uh, on Disney Plus, Marvel has officially added them to their MCU timeline. Which they kind of always work. They did always reference the events of Avengers. Yeah, but... yeah. They started off that way, and then when Marvel. Studios and Marvel Television had their split. The canon stopped. Yes, but it looks like Marvel is now trying to retroactively uh, make them canon. Which, if they had started earlier, I believe they c- could have made that work. Now, like I watched the first episode of Echo. So far, all I've seen is the first episode. When I saw that episode, saw how Daredevil uh, was and interacted with everybody and saw how Kingpin was and interacted with everybody, I was very comfortable in saying, okay, I do not think this is tied to the the Netflix shows at, at all. Because what I started doing recently and I'm still doing is I'm re-watching the original Daredevil show. And just the way the characters acted in there and how they're acting here not the same at all. What, so makes, you, what makes you say that about okay. Kingpin? And Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Daredevil was only there for like 15 seconds. Yeah, it's it, it just like 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 the whole tone and style feels very different. How Kingpin is, and like the, the thing I kept going over in, in my mind was Daredevil seasons one, two, and three. And then after three, where, how could this how could these events fit into the timeline of that show? And they I don't. It's before, up with, I think. What? Huh? I think it's before. Or after. I think it would be after. Well, season, yeah, but... It's not during season three. I can... Or season, the seasons, I can tell you that. It'd be before yeah, yeah. or after. Yeah, ex- exactly. But then, like, after... Like, so much changes afterwards where, like, King Pen is outed even more i mean because like there are flashbacks scenes where like just like the way 
Kingpin was interacting with the police. It gave season three vibes, but there was no way for that to take place during season three. And it's like, afterwards, there's no way Kingpin is getting away with any of that crap here. So it just it just felt very much like, okay, this cannot be, like the Netflix shows can no longer be canon. That same kind of backstory can be canon here. But like, it's like the way Kingpin talked, so much weight was attached to everything. Mm-hmm. And just how he's talking here doesn't have that same weight at all. Like, like a lot of how he talks, a lot of how they're written, kind of the same, but like the direction, the overall style of the show is just something feels off. Something isn't there that I felt needs to be there. So I'm still loving seeing Kingpin and Daredevil. Just it doesn't feel like quite the same. So my head was like, okay, I want it to be canned for a while. This is a clear sign for me that I can now say, nope, it's like, it's not, but I can appreciate these two different interpretations of these characters. And then Marvel's like, hey, we did this. It's now canon. And I said, no, don't take the easy way out. You wanted it to be canon. You should have worked harder for a tie-in. And obviously, I haven't seen all of Echo. I'm just one episode in. It's very possible a lot more happens to tie it in a lot closer. But just with 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 what I've been seeing with Daredevil here, I've been loving the Daredevil show. And it's reminded me, it's like Marvel can be really good and they really try to a degree. Where like in the MCU shows, I I I haven't seen anything close to what Daredevil has, to what Jessica Jones has. It's I feel with how hard they worked on character de- development there, it's almost a disservice to be like, yep. These are these same characters, these like not quite three dimensional figures we've kind of crammed back in here. It's just something cheap, of, like about taking what I view as more of works of art and saying, yep, these are ours now. They belong here. These shows that we wanted nothing to do with, we cut Marvel t- television out completely. Now we're just kind of taking these back in and saying, yep. These are ours. I just feel there's something so like cheap about that where they could have worked to bring these characters into the universe earlier, did not. And now they're trying to like kind of shoehorn them in. And 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 there's there's more of Echo to watch. And so far, I liked the first episode of Echo here. I'm liking Echo's journey specifically, but just for King Pen and Daredevil didn't really feel the same here. Um, it's interesting you feel that way because I feel like, and you know, I've watched the entire thing, which is rare for me to have watched something before you have. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> very rare here recently. I thought Kingpin was written really well for the show. All right, okay, okay, sweet. Obviously, not as well as the Netflix show, and I think that is more less to do with. I think that had more to do with the fact that it was under Netflix and under Marvel TV than it does Marvel. But I think Marvel has a lot less control than people think maybe because of, the, because of how much money Disney is le- is hemorrhaging right now. I think a lot of decisions are being made based on what the board and what the CEO thinks mm-hmm. and a lot less on what actually should happen. Yeah. Which is why we're getting so much garbage right now. Because I don't mm-hmm. think Marvel is being allowed to do what Marvel is allowed to do. Marvel has done in the past because Disney's trying to be trying not to lose as much money because especially now because they had to buy the rest of Hulu um yeah oh that was one other thing because it was it was like the fight scene from like the first episode of Echo between Echo and Daredevil after having seen so many fight scenes from Daredevil recently. Like that fight scene, just in terms of style, didn't compare at all. That's fine. It's a different show. But just the character of Daredevil himself, 
seemed a lot more like quippy. Which I mean, I've heard he is in the comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like I'm totally fine with that character. Like, like I like that character of Daredevil. It just felt like a different Daredevil from the Netflix show. So for them to just say, "Hey, we're gonna have Daredevil. We're gonna do him this way," which is a great way. I don't have problems with that at all. But then say, "Oh, when we're gonna take all this backstory, this other thing, and just kind of cram that in." Say, "Yep, this is ours now. This is." And then I find something a little off, like uh, about that. Just yeah. not as thrilled. That's fair. Um, uh, well, since we're already here, I might as well continue with the with the, the echo. Um, Absolutely. I kind of hinted at this earlier. This may I think this has um, Captain America and the Winter Soldier or Falcon and the Winter Soldier syndrome. Yeah, I'm gonna call it. Probably should have been a movie. Interesting. There was a lot of not even backstory. There's just a lot of time filling that I don't mm-hmm. really think was necessary. But it wasn't bad. And there, there's some important things in there, kind of in the same vein as Falcon the Winter Soldier, with all the uh, all the like the, the the Black Lives Matter and the um, uh, proving yourself uh, regardless of your race. There's a lot of that in here with uh, Native Americans mm-hmm. because that's that's a big part of it, and I think they did a really good job of doing that. Um, and you could have included that a lot of that in the in a movie, um, but there's just there there was there was just I don't know. It just seemed like there's too much, or like not too much going on, not enough going on, but too much going on at the same time. It's it's kind of weird. Gotcha. Um, I, I, either way, I enjoyed it. And I, but I still wanted more. Five yeah. episodes seemed too short. Even though I know I'm saying that it probably should have been a movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was good, and I enjoyed it. I'm not a hundred percent satisfied where it left off. All right. Yeah, and I will also add just because like I've only in the first episode, so just speaking from that, the pacing kind of felt weird in the first episode, but I. Like I know that's in large part due to the first part being a, like a, uh, a like flashback recap thing yeah. where it took and a lot of clips from Hawkeye, which I love. There are so many clips like directly from Hawkeye, some with even more than we got in in uh, in the Hawkeye show, mm-hmm. and just more background into her life, which I thought was fantastic. But yeah. I also thought like an audience perspective. If you weren't f- familiar with Hawkeye and didn't know that, that it was doing a partial recap, mm-hmm. I, I would have been like, what the heck is this pacing? Mm-hmm. Like, they're going through, like, what we just, we're, we're, we're just in- introduced to this Kingpin figure and he gets shot in the head, like, 20 minutes in this show. What is going on? Mm-hmm. And not knowing that, like, it's a, a, a recap may have lost some general audiences there it's like that kind of threw off my uh perspective of a the pacing yeah i'm with you i felt the same way um but so far looking pretty solid like i mean i haven't gone out of my way to watch the other episodes here it's been a busy week of busy weekend Mm -hmm. but uh like i mean i mean i'm planning to finish this series here yeah so uh, um i will say unlike loki very bingeable yeah yeah i yeah you can binge watch the show you cannot binge watch loki i learned that the hard way (laughs) (laughs) sorry sorry. or or andor for that matter because that's i also binge watched andor Again, probably oh. not a good idea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Probably why I don't like either of those two shows because I binge watched yeah. them. But, um, but yeah, it's a very bingeable show. It's a good show. I'm not saying it's not amazing, but it's a good show. Right. Um, cool. I would say top half of the Marvel shows, but like not very high in the top half. Just kind of near the bottom, or kind of like near the literally near the gotcha. middle of all Marvel shows. So, anyway, <laughs> going back to news here. <laughs> to, a little bit more news. Uh, the first trailer for Deadpool will reportedly be shown during the Super Bowl on February 11th. Wait, hold on, 11th. Getting closer. Uh, 
I thought the February. I thought it was the beginning of February, like the first weekend of February. I'm not even gonna be in town. Wow. I was gonna host the Super Bowl, and I can't if I'm not here. So, famously. Great point. <laughs> um, which mm-hmm. I'm excited about. Mm-hmm. I love that pool. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Um, no, there's not much more I can say about that. It's just sweet. Yeah. A Marvel movie that may not disappoint me. We'll see. We will see. Uh, next, the Hollywood handle, which is on a streak lately. Uh, what? How? I missed this. Oh, you did? I did. A what if version of Star Wars is reportedly in the works. Fuck yeah. yeah. Now, I've seen some concerns or like around There's this. No Most- concerns. This is perfect. Well, because like what m- most people are saying is there's so much that Star Wars could do with this. this if there like, is. What if Darth Vader convinced Luke to join the dark side? Oh, uh, what if Anakin never turned to the dark side at all? But what people are scared of is Star Wars will doing the same thing that like m- Marvel did, where instead of exploring those interesting ideas, it'll be like, what if uh, Chewbacca had a hat? <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that in, instead. And I saw someone t- tweet that example out specifically, and I love that so much because it describes the Marvel stuff so well. And it also terrifies me because that's what Marvel did for a lot of it. So, Will, I'm, I'm, I'm being very cautious on this one here, but I hope, oh, I hope they do it well. <laughs> What if Chewbacca had a hat? (laughs) What if... Well, now I gotta know. What if Chewbacca had a hat? Yeah. Uh, That was good. That was very funny. Thank you for that. What if Chewbacca had a hat? I don't know. What if... No. um, Always having to pass stuff along. Something I would love to see in something like that Is what if Yoda was the Sith? Interesting. I'm kidding. I, I don't know where that came from. I just drew. I just I pulled it right out of nowhere. You, you know what would be super wild is if they have the same kind of like prequels arc, like all of the events kind of trans uh, transpire in the same way, but it's what if instead of. Palpatine being the Sith Lord, what if Jar Jar was actually the Sith Lord, and they actually explore a Sith Lord Jar Jar arc? They actually did what he what he intended on doing. Yeah, like they actually did. Where where it's, it's like everything goes along the exact same. Where like the Jedi Council s- suspecting Palpatine and everything, so everything transpires the exact same way, but it turns out to actually be, be hey, Jar, Jar. Jar Jar. That'd be wild. Mm-hmm. Who do you think gets turned in the dark? Do you think it's still probably Anakin gets turned in the dark side of Jar Jar? Sure. Or Jar Jar finds a young Grogu, turns him to the dark side instead. <sighs> and then, like, I mean, like, other interesting ones they could do would be what if uh, Aya was trained to be a Jedi and instead of Luke, like, yeah, if, like, yeah. Luke and Leia are sent to opposite planets. Yeah. Um, and then there's, uh, uh, I don't know, what if Han shot first? I don't fucking know. Um, you know what? Okay. Now I'm going to tell you that. that. I, f- I hate that argument. It's so stupid. Who cares who shot first? No, like, see, the craziest thing is, like, because, like, the, I mean, the reason that they changed it is because in what most people think the original cut was, which this isn't actually the, like, or, original one. I have a more original one than, than than that, and I'll tell you what happens in, in, in that one in a moment. But in what most people think the original one is, it's... Han shoots before Kirito shoots. And what it's supposed to symbolize is like, oh yeah, 
Han's a scoundrel here. He's like protective, you know. He'll kill if he needs to, and like, like, it's like he'll strike before somebody else. He's not a hero here. He's not act I mean, like, like he's not killing reactively. He's killing proactively here. It's supposed to kind of show more of like who he is at at the time. And when they change it to like Torito shoots before Han, it's like, oh, Han's just Han's just a he, he's just a little guy. He's just acting in self defense here. Guy. You can't be mad at Han. Han's a hero, and it's like, no, he has to kind of work up to to be a hero because beforehand he was a scoundrel. Where if he sensed someone was about to come for him, no, he's going for them first. So all those are good possible? points, Brennan. Yeah, huh? Wow, those are good points. You've still not convinced me to care, to care, no, yeah, or to give a shit I'm, about I'm who not, shot first. <laughs> not trying to convince you at all. I'm just saying, like that is why people care, and that's why people okay. have stakes. I have an older cut than, uh, than that. I was able to add to my collection three of the oldest physical cuts of those movies that you can find before George Lucas made hardly any changes at all. And it's so funny. You can look this up online too, but in the original cut of episode four, it's not Han shot first, Greedo shot first. Han was the only one who shot. Greedo did not get a chance to shoot at all. He did not have his, his hand on, on the gun. Han just gunned him down in cold blood. He, he wasn't doing anything like, Practically whatever. He just executed Greedo just because. And it's the wildest thing. I think they thought that was a little too, like, cold-blooded scoundrel for him because then they added, like, a Greedo shooting thing to kind of give him a reason for shooting first. And they just changed it all together here. But it's just supposed to add a lot of characterization on that they take away from him gotcha so yeah they've i mean the, they don't have to do a who but if for that they've explored well, every kidding. scenario except for the scenario greedo's the only one who shoots and that way han's just killed and then maybe in the, and then no one stops now, darth vader it's it's like obi-wan uh luke and greedo who all go on in this adventure <laughs> Okay, no, now I need to see that. That's what I need to see. Mm -hmm. What if Greedo is the only one who shot and Han dies? Then what happens? Who stops the Empire? Okay, no, I'm convinced that's what needs to happen. Although I do think if we're being realistic here, all that would happen in that scenario is Chewbacca would rip off Greedo's arms, but (laughs) Disney can just go around that somehow. Well, but they would never go back. Oh, that's true. He would. He would find out. Chewbacca Mm -hmm. would find out. Because I'm pretty sure Chewbacca, I think Chewbacca also, was like right next to Han the, the entire time. Also, it would have been damn near impossible for them there. to have snuck onto the ship with an alien. <laughs> you know, the Empire hated those non humans. <laughs> would have been very hard for them to have done what they did. The, the yeah. whole dynamic changes. Granted, yeah. they snuck on with Chewie, didn't they? So maybe it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Mandalorian movie update. Yeah, and that's just kind of all these stuff I talked about uh, before where they're wanting to do that movie above the other stuff. They're wanting it to lead to sequel films and the season four scripts. They're all complete, but nobody has any idea if those are happening. Well, and then it says that the movie was made prior to the strikes. Yep. Well, that it was made... A uh, well, my made priority, priority during the yeah. strike. Sorry, I misread. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and the last thing, the last news I am so excited about because especially after the show's not happening, us, but after watching the original Daredevil series, I love Karen and Foggy so much. The show is not happening. Just, I don't care if it's not happening just oh, yeah. so- <laughs> i know in this non-existent show it has some karen of my and- f- favorite characters yeah eldon Han- henson and deborah ann wool will return as foggy and karen i can sleep soundly at night again why did they not do this in the first place i'm s- like i i keep getting happier and happier that they tossed out 
whatever old stuff they had for the Terry Devil Morning Ken shows because, like, oh, well, that's right, they did that. Cause, yeah, because like they had like three episodes filmed, four episodes filmed. They scrapped all of them. They fired everybody. They started from square one, and that usually terrifies me. Here, it sounds like every decision that 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 they've made since is fantastic. Yes, because except to actually they make the movie, except the, except for actually making the show. Yeah, like they brought in teams from like the original Netflix shows. They're they're having these characters return. Uh, if they can actually cast the the original actress for Vanessa and the character of Vanessa, it'll be oh, perfect nice. for me. Um, huh? I thought Vanessa died in season three. Mm, I don't think so. No. Hmm. I think she's just uh, oh, arrested. Oh, that's right. She sucks. Anyway. Like it's like it's like the person Vanessa, bad person. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, not, not that the, the the actor sucks, and not that the character Vanessa sucks. Mm-hmm. Just the character of Vanessa sucks as a person. Mm-hmm. Clear as blood. Yeah. Yep. Um. But yeah. So I'm really looking forward to this show. Yep. It was originally supposed to release in 2024, which we're currently in. I think you and I both know it's not going to release anywhere close to 2020. For, I'm hoping it will release before the end of 2026. Uh, it could never um, 2026. release here. Um, but we will see. We will see. That's all I will say. Anyway, we have now been recording for almost two hours. Two yeah, hours. Okay. Do we want to quickly share our thoughts on Percy Jackson? Yes, let's be very quick about it. I mean, we, we knew this was going to be news heavy. I mean, it's been two months to record it. Yes. Me. So... Percy Jackson and the Olympians have been dropping since, I think, December? Like, late December? December 22nd, I want to say. Something like that. Somewhere in there. So, Brennan. Oh, December 20th. 20th. You were two days off. It's not the big deal. I probably watched on the 22nd, let's be real. So, (laughs) Brennan. Yes. We are four episodes in. Another episode five. drops tomorrow. Five episodes in. Five episodes in. Another episode drops tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. It's halfway through the season. Uh, over halfway. There are only eight episodes total. <laughs> when will they start well, making long shows? Wally is defeated. Okay, with three episodes left, which mm-hmm. does not seem like enough. Mm-hmm. What are your What are your What are your opinions so far? I am interested. I am still interested. I'm engaged. It is not my favorite show, but it, it has been able to hold my attention the whole way through. I think the actors are doing a fantastic job, and I think the pacing is is excellent. The first I, episode's pacing was terrible, but everything since has been fine. Yes. The first episode was a little, like, I don't, I didn't... Mm, Mind the first episode. It's a bit of a leap uh, f- for me as I am currently reading the book. I say because I started the book like a year ago and I'm it's been a while. the way done and I haven't picked it up since. But they deviate so heavily from the book in Do a they- way that's oh, 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 yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like they do not stick to the book at all. Interesting. Yeah, like it's like all of the big events, but in in like in like almost every uh episode where the book it would take them forever to realize something. In the movie like in the show, sorry, they realize it immediately and they say, What kind of dumb person wouldn't realize this immediately? And then something else happens to like screw them over and like and like make up a a majority of the conflict for the episode, which I, it's, I, I think is a fantastic idea because like hardcore fans, it keeps them on like on their toes. You can't like predict plot points and it makes it like, so you're watching like a whole new story, but it's like the comfort of the story uh, you love, which I think is a fantastic idea on one hand. But on the other hand, it's like, 
I liked when this stuff happened in the book and I was hoping to see this on screen and I don't. So like, that's kind of sad, but like, it's really, really neat to see the same story told in a new way. Yeah. I don't remember the books. It's been probably about a, oh God, how, how old am I? 25? How long ago was middle school? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I haven't read them in a while. Let's just say that. I thought, from what I had remembered, that like, and I really just remember like general things. I thought they were sticking to the story pretty well, which makes oh, sense because they are no, in terms of the general story. Oh, well, yeah, um, like every the the general events. Yep. Um, and the water park scene, which I remember not being in the movie, I was like, ah, yep. they put it in here this time. No, that's about all I remember. Yep. 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 Um. Ah, yep. So I have really liked it so far. Mm -hmm. The care of the actors have been phenomenal. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan of Grover's actor in the first episode either. Oh, yeah? Because I don't think his acting was very good in the first episode. And neither were any of the adults. Yeah. It, but it did feel kind of off in the first episode. Clunky. Like, Yeah, like it took a while for them to find their footing. Yes, but ep episodes two through five have been really, really good. Mm -hmm. in my opinion. And um, it's so jarring to see them as actual children, children because it, yes, it's like you read it in a book and you're like, oh yeah, they're kids, sure. And then you see it in a live action movie where everyone's like scaled up to like 20 or whatever. <laughs> but then you watch them and it's like, oh yeah, in the book it says this kid is like 11 years old. And you see an 11 year old on screen with and like armor and a sword and you're like, oh my God, there's something deeply wrong with all of this. <laughs> with like, that's the way it works. It was intended, and it's so wild to see that on screen. Yeah. Like, um, in a fantastic way, where you're like, oh, yeah, this is screwed up. <laughs> yeah. One thing I wasn't a fan of, and maybe you can correct me because you've read the book more recently, or, like, part of the book more recently than I have. I feel like it took longer for Percy to get Riptide. Am I wrong? Uh, Well, because, like, no, he gets it about the same time, because, like, in the show, did, okay. it's like, it's like what, like ten minutes into the first episode. Yeah, like when he fights some. Yeah, when he fights the Minotaur. Did he get it when he fought the Minotaur? I thought it was after. Oh no, he gets it during the museum tour. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. He got it a lot earlier than that. I forgot. Either He's way, I I don't know why I felt like he got it way later than that. Maybe I clear. Like I said, I haven't read this book since I was like eleven. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It is kind of weird. Because, like, in the book especially, they take more time. Like, all the events that were crammed into the first episode were a lot more drawn out in the book and gave a lot more time for things to be established in the book here. Well, in the first episode, they kind of just crammed a lot in and made it really easy to kind of lose track. Which is why I think eight episodes, not enough. Never enough. I thought it was supposed to be ten. Nope. Eight. <gasps> Disney. What, yeah. Which, why do they hate long shows? And I'm really hoping I can finish the book before the show ends. Right, and from, just get the audiobook. <laughs> from what I've seen with like the chapter titles and stuff, uh, uh, in the book here, I I'm good till after episode six. I think I've read up past what episode six will be in the book, but I haven't read. Uh, what so, what will be episodes seven and eight? So I'm hoping I can you actually got, you got a week. sit down and I read those. Yeah, you got a week. And I've not made any progress in the book in like eight months. So yeah, just get the audiobook, man. Yeah, yeah. And then you can do stuff and listen to it. Yep. So um, yeah. Uh, so far, I've been enjoying it. I won't say it's been like my favorite show of all time, but like each. Tuesday or Wednesday here, it has been a very solid, very reliable watch yep. each time. Um, I think this, I think the show is just going to get better with time. I think like the book. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, because they're they're actually kids, so you can have them progress through all the books, all the seasons, if it keeps getting renewed, if they so choose. If and Disney doesn't let this, if, if, go ahead. Oh, as I was saying, and have things stay very accurate in the same manner to 
to, to how they were in these stories. Also, by the way, casting for this show, phenomenal. Like, oh, yeah. everyone's perfect. Yeah. Everyone. There has not been one bad role yet, with the possible exception of... And, and well, Miranda, we yeah, haven't seen weird. yet, but, like, him, he just seems like, like, like all of the other gods, they're kind of regular people, which has kind of been, like, a little bit off. There's always been something about them that's just like, hey, I'm a god here. And Lin-Manuel Miranda, we've, we've only seen him in, like, one quick scene in uh, the Person show, show. And, and then one quick scene in the trailer. Yeah. But so far, he doesn't really give off that kind of vibe yet. Yeah. But I'm hopeful. So we will see next episode because he's supposed to yep. make an appearance next episode here. Yep. But yeah, this so far... Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh oh yeah, what I was gonna say. If Disney cancels the show before it's over, I'm rioting. Yes, yeah. So, yep. They have to make it like, through and I'm and I'm, and I'm talking about both series too. Like, oh yeah. If they don't make it through, I will riot. I'm going to go to Disney's headquarters, I'm going to throw tomatoes at the windows. If this show can get through ten seasons, <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Is that how many that books be... there are? Well, so no, six yeah. or 11, because they have that six book now. The, yeah. the Chalice of the Gods. And technically, there's the Trials of Apollo series that is like the third series. So, this show better is... last longer than I'm alive. <laughs> oh, man. Six seasons yeah, like... of a movie. Forget it. 16 seasons and no movies yeah but, but i I mean, I mean like like the actors and everything have been doing um and incredible even and manuel miranda there have just been some creative decisions where i've been like i don't know how i feel uh about this creative decision uh but well rick riley uh, made the decision so you're gonna have to be okay with it <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this. So far, I'm still willing to uh, until I give everything a chance until it's all over, and then I'll be able to give my final thoughts. Yeah, and that's probably what on the next episode will be was is and when this show is over. Absolutely. Uh, we're bad at doing things on time. Yep. With that being said, I think we're about to cross the two hour mark here. So yeah, so that's great. all I've got. Yeah, I'll just say for. But if season two, it was fine. It's great to have on in 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 the background if you want to be cleaning and just have something up to like be some background noise. Fantastic show! I highly recommend. But if season two for that, um, there were a couple episodes that I think were like uh, noteworthy to mention here. Mm -hmm. The first three, I think, are kind of mostly skippable there were some cool premises but i didn't really connect with the episodes here episode two had like the avengers assembling in like the 80s which was a neat premise it was fine it wasn't as fleshed out as it could have been because obviously it's it, it's just one episode um Episode four was allegedly, I don't know if it actually was or not, but was allegedly the Gamora episode that was removed from season one. That, yeah. that one was probably the first one that I was like, hey, I'm Ivan here. Even though it was kind of like a weird premise. Um, There was probably the standout episode where if you just watch one episode and, and that was it there's an episode of what if uh a native american tribe gained the power of the tesseract and it was genuinely a really cool episode because it like it didn't tie into anything else in in like the mcu at all it wasn't like oh yeah here's tony stark doing some wild other space thing or or, or like here's 
like these other characters that you know it was like all new characters and it was just this very interesting thing and like it's like a subtitle episode because it's just spoken in the native american language of like that tribe completely and it's it was like a really cool really kind of like artful episode it reminded me kind of of a of a star wars legends or then what if so that was neat i like legends legends or visions oh uh visions yeah gotcha so that's probably the only one that i would recommend here and then there were some other episodes like like oh uh oh there was an there was another kind of cool one with captain carter like i really don't think what if like does everything that they can do but like captain carter as a character i think is super cool and for the most part the show Agreed. handles her well even she if the episode they put her into oh yeah damage. that sucked um but yeah the the scenarios that they put her into i don't really like those but like uh in in the episode here she is a dynamic with black widow that is phenomenal so seeing her get to interact with all these characters i like she does a great job um and then yeah they had this weird thing where uh spoilers here but the doctor strange from the first season of what if who's a hero after being a villain he turns back into a villain but with multiversal power and captain carter essentially has to stop him and they do it in kind of a really what a lot of people online hated i thought was fine i thought it was about the same consistency as the first couple episodes of what if that i didn't like but like she gets like all the powers from across the multiverse where she has like the infinity stones she has hella's helmet thing with the horns she she gets like all this powerful stuff and they have a fight and it's fine and that's how it ends that was the big build up here and so like it was a fine series good to have on in in the background here i don't quite understand how this is getting like it's already confirmed for a a third season here and we already got a clip from season three um why yeah like it's fine. It's good to have on in, in, in the background. There are some good bits like the Native, the Native American episode. I actually have to stop doing things and watch it. It's like, this is really, really neat. Um, and there's an episode with the Mandarin and Hela if they teamed up. That one was nice. That's probably around the... Uh, more a tony stark episode for me like it's all not bad stuff they've definitely gotten higher quality since season one but still as as a show wouldn't really recommend it as a whole it just if there's an, an episode you like you like the premise of go watch that maybe but past that still not really worth it although it ends on such a cool shot where the watcher says like oh there are so many stories in this universe and it pans out and the multiverse is formed into the tree we see at the end of Loki's season two oh, which cool. i thought was really sick nice um but yeah that's my a review for that nice well it has been two hours my friend Yep. And it is 10 o'clock at night. This is the latest we've ever recorded. A, this is the latest we've recorded an episode in a long time. Yep. We used sure. to do them at like 8 or 9. When yeah. either of us had jobs and were still in school. Yep. But uh, that is not the case anymore. Not at all. We both have jobs. Mm-hmm. You Up in Canada. have to go to yours tomorrow. Yep. I probably I, won't. I do, and I'm not really looking forward to it, but that's neither here nor, nor there. I probably yeah. won't have to. Probably just going to sit on my laptop and do Excel all day tomorrow. So, without further ado, everybody, 
Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully it keeps you busy okay. while you're at work, at home, on the road, wherever you I are. Hope this is great stuff to have on in the background while you are cleaning. Exactly. So I'm Wally. That's Brennan. Go subscribe to our YouTube channels at Wolfgate Entertainment and not Brennan. Maybe Brennan will maybe post something eventually. Oops, so Follow us on Instagram, even summer. though I don't have the password to it anymore. Oh, yeah. No. And uh, we will see you next time. You should have that password now. Okay, peace. Peace.